wanted to share. All right, guys. Um, for everybody online, thank you for showing up. We have a lot of people here enjoying some food. Look at. Say hi. Say hi. Hello. Hello. So if you if you show up, you get pizza. Anyway, we have First American team today uh, here with us. Uh, Angie's here now. She's uh, with Title. And then we're gonna have Sandy here with home warranty and also Brandon with NHD, all part of the First American team. They're here to help you. So they're gonna show you all the tools readily available to you. So if you're not signed up, please contact your affiliates to get signed up. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Angie to go over um, a lot of tools within the, the title side of First American title. Now, um, I'm going to share your screen to. Yeah, okay. we can. I'll, I'll just. We have people on the website. This. I'm going to show them these two things. Yeah, that's fine. I'll go. And then you go from there, right? Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm going to put it like this. Okay, okay yeah. So it's so quick. Thank you. Hopefully there's no pizza. Maybe should I should I tell them to bring some more? No. Okay. 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 Hi guys. Hi. How are you? Hi. 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 I'm gonna give you some great golden nuggets for you guys to chomp on too. Um. So as First American, we're we're a really large company. We're one of the largest in in real estate for title insurance. And since we're such a large company, we diversified and we added, you know, we have 1031. If you guys ever wanted to do 1031 exchange mm -hmm. or reverse uh, 1031, we also have NHD, which is Brandon Saransky. Mm -hmm. And we have Sandy Franco in our home warranty division. So we have a whole gamut of everything under the roof of real estate to help you grow your business. Mm -hmm. As you know, title side, we're highly, highly, highly regulated. Mm -hmm. um, so because we're so regulated, the beauty is that the other divisions within First American, they're not as highly regulated. Mm -hmm. So whether you need door hangers or something else to help you with the listing presentations, I have my two counterparts, Brandon and Sandy, to help balance, balance everything out. And it'll be all under the First American Eagle, um, or I title five, NHD and home warranty. And then maybe later on we could do a 1031 class and get to, to understand 1031. Um, I'm actually doing a lot of 1031s right now because there's a number, I, for the ones that have gone to my classes before, there's two categories that are being listed most frequently. Right, one category is the 30 plus years ownership and three plus bedrooms, right? And those are going to be, if you think about it, the older generation. And if they're going to be the older generation, they're more than likely going to want to, to do a 1031. So the more knowledgeable you are, the second, the other, the second, the <laughs> second eagle. <laughs> um, but the more the more uh, knowledgeable you are on all the different uh, sectors in, in real estate, the easier it is for you to be able to help your clients buy or sell. So if you're working with, if you have a good understanding of 1031, this may be your, your way to bring in the knowledge for your clients to show that you're an expert in the real estate sector. So that's why I like to bring all the nuggets and, and, and share them with you because the more educated you guys are, the better you are to grab those listings and the buyers and differentiate, differentiate yourself with the competitor, your other, the other agents, and so that you guys get the listing. As you know, the market is shifting. Last week on Caravan, there were only three on our city board of realtors. Today, there are nine. So it's not what it needs to be, which means the challenge is there for you guys to differentiate and look more, um, more like a, a better realtor. You want to make sure you have that that leverage. Um, so with First American, we have the strength and stability. Um, we offer all the data that everything that we offer in the data is First American prior to First American. We buy all the data. Um, so all of our data is usually a lot better. Um, when you compare us to realists, a lot of times there might be some information that's not accurate. And then they check with us and they're like, wait, this is, this is more accurate than filling. Mm -hmm. And I've got that, that comment before from realtors. Um, so with that being said, um, if you see, if some of you guys have this in your pocket. So this, this is numbers. Numbers are really important when you're dealing with insurance because we have 1.6 billion in cash. So this is think of this as your claim reserves. This is our claim reserve. So when there is an issue with title insurance and a claim needs to be paid out, you you we have money to pay it out. So it's less likely that we're going to fight with our clients to decide whether or not we're going to pay the claim. And I know I've told you this before about the permit. Do you guys remember this, the permit story? Mm -hmm. Well, 
I'll, I'll just wrap it up for really quickly for the ones that didn't hear about it. There was a client uh, last fourth quarter of last year that had a permit um, issue. So she was representing the buyer. Luckily, it was a first American title policy and it had changed its title three times prior. And it didn't catch up until the third buyer owned it, which happened to be First American policy. And so I asked her to go check with the previous title insurance company, and nobody responded. They didn't even, like, they, they couldn't even take care of the claim. But we ended up giving her the option to give her the claim of twenty-five thousand, which is the maximum claim for the permit. And she, you know, she was really emotional about it, but she didn't want to take the money. She wanted to fight everybody and sue everybody because there's three transfers prior, and it took the city. Three transfers later from 2016 to realize that the permits were not up to date mm -hmm. or up to code. So they shut off the water, they shut off the electricity, mm -hmm. not livable. And now, you know, she's still paying the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, this, you know, if that was me, I would have just taken 25000 and try to fix it um, versus trying to get emotional and sue everybody because then now you have to try to see plus you're paying the mortgage mm -hmm. and who knows when it's going to end. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a strength and stability. And last week, an agent called me. He bought a property, and then he found out there was permit issues. And right away, he called First American. I it was in my file. Called First American, and we gave him twenty five thousand a check just because there was a a, a faulty permit issue. Mm -hmm. Who pays the permit issues? What? What kind of permit? Issues? There's all different types. Well, that's permit that issues. you're you're accepting the money to resolve it yourself. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What kind of permit is that? Yeah, so there's all types of permit issues. Like if you you know if you didn't permit the bathroom or you added a you know bedroom and uh, it's so not done correctly. Right. But so these are all items that flip through the cracks, right? Yeah. yeah. And then oh, okay. every title company, yeah, okay. there's a ton of different types. Yeah. And title companies, we don't go and look for all the permits. Yeah. When we we just you know that we just don't have the manpower to search all the permits. Mm -hmm. But in the event that you need a permit search, we can. I can I can search it for you. I can request my third party to, to do it for us. Free of charge for you guys. But on a title, if you talk to any title company, they're not going to do the search for you for the permits and ensure like everything that's part of it. We just say an umbrella here, 25,000, if something is wrong with the permit. That's the evil added value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is just something good for you to feel comfortable with if you're talking to clients. They're like, why are we choosing First American? Why can't we use, you know, XYZ title company? Well, now you can say, well, because they're protecting your, your most expensive asset, your home. And this is why you want to work with us because our numbers are here. Other companies, you know, it, they, they don't have the strength and stability of First American. Um, so with that in mind, I have some more information and then Sandy and Brian are going to talk. So buyers and sellers, I was going to go over this with you, uh, but I don't think, well, I just have a little bit of time. I'll show you some of the new videos that we have. So this is some of the resources. So remember I told you um, from the very beginning of the class, the three of us, we, when we combine our efforts, we can cover all the things that certain, you know, certain divisions cannot handle. Like for title, we can't do a lot of you know, store hangers and stuff before yeah. Sandy comes in. But I can do all the, the farming. And I'll, I'll teach you how to farm really quickly, how to get phone numbers and emails compliantly. So, and there's a 75% accuracy rate for your phone numbers and a 35% accuracy rate for your email. There's a minimal charge, like five cents and seven cents. You're not gonna break the bank, but at least you're getting a, a good, um, you're paying for a good quality list, okay? Um, so I'm gonna show you these videos really quick. And these are just, just so that you know that in the event that you want to talk to buyer or seller and they don't know what title insurance is or you're filling out the RK and you don't want them sitting there waiting, mm -hmm. this is something you can show them, like the importance of title insurance, what it is that we are insuring on. So let me jump on really quick and pull it up. You can add that to your buyer or seller presentation yeah. so that way you can explain it to them. Oh, they, they can be self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here are all the different videos on home ownership. So buying a home, what is title insurance? These are all things that they can navigate while you're filling out the RPA or, or doing something else to keep their, their mind busy. And they can learn a little bit about title insurance. I don't know if you guys want to see one example. Do you guys want to see one? Yeah, or, yeah? which one do you guys want me to pick? Buying a home. 
And you see a little uh, the minimizer on the oh, this one. There you go. Okay, cool. So there's these are all the different options, but um I don't know if this is a video. Let's check. Oh, this one, yeah, this is okay. Buying a home part one and there's part two. I'm just gonna do part one and then you can see the quality of our videos. They're all really short and concise, just to show the importance of it. Uh, there's usually somebody that talks. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's not showing. Why it's not? Um. Hmm. Okay. Let's let's see. Yeah, because there's usually somebody that talks in our videos. <laughs> it's just not. Uh. Let me see. Let me see if this one works better. Huh. Okay. Maybe this is still in the works. <laughs> But it usually gives like um there's usually somebody talking. Are let me see. Shareable? Yeah, they're all shareable. Um let me see. But they're not brandable, right? They are not brandable. Compliance wise, they don't allow us to brand. Um let me see. How do I go back? Uh there's a browser up on top. <laughs> oh, you gotta move that. Yeah, yeah. yeah there it is. I think this one, let me see. What is title? Okay. So usually somebody is talking. When property is financed, bought, or sold, a record of that transaction is generally filed in public archive. Likewise, records of other events that may affect the ownership of a property, like liens or levies, are also archived. When a buyer purchases title insurance for their property, a title company searches these records to find and remedy, if possible, several types of ownership issues. When you request a policy of title insurance, the title company first searches public records to determine the property's ownership status. After this search, the underwriter will determine the insurability of the title. But even the most skilled title professionals may not find all problems associated with the property. Some risks, such as title issues due to filing errors, forgeries, or undisclosed errors, are difficult to identify. So after the title company finishes its searching, it also provides you with a policy that will help protect you from a variety of issues that may be uncovered later. This policy ensures your ownership rights to the property. And the best part is you only pay for this once and your coverage will last as long as you own your home. So the policy we just described is an owner's policy of title insurance. But if you secure a mortgage in order to buy your property, there's also a separate policy that helps to protect the lender. The lender will require that you buy what's called a loan policy of title insurance because they want their interest covered too. A real estate purchase may be the largest investment you've ever made. So when you buy an owner's policy of title insurance, just think of it like, oh, I don't know, buying some peace of mind. So I get a lot of people always, like some of your clients are always like, well, isn't that the same thing as escrow? What about home warranty? What about State Farm? Everybody thinks it's, you know, title insurance they don't know much about. Mm -hmm. So this is just something that they can have. I'm going to talk to Tech about those other two videos, the buyer's one, and see why they weren't having difficulty um, listening to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I just can ask you, are these videos in Spanish? Or yes, we do. We have them in Spanish too. So if you look under the first thing multicultural.com, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different uh, informational videos and everything um, mm -hmm. that you can use too in Chinese and in Spanish. Um, so that's the beauty of a large company. We have all the, the resources to help you grow your business. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing you guys wanted to see was farming. So I'm going to go really quickly and show you farming. Um, so buyer, bless you. Bless you. So buyers and sellers can also use this information. Um, if you're a buyer, you can always target 
2.5 miles away. Find those two categories that I told you about. So the first category was 30 plus years home ownership, three plus bedroom. Second category was anybody in distress, life events, divorces, probates, affidavit of death, means. Those are all types of properties that you can find 2.5 miles away. So whether you're a buyer or a representative of a listing agent, that's a list that you're going to need to target. So statistically speaking, I know at the last meeting I told you guys, 80% of all homeowners have an interest rate less than 6%. Those guys aren't going to want to move anywhere. Say it again. Yeah. 80% oh. have a mortgage loan under interest rate of under 6%. Sarah, actually, I have a problem. Oh, no, yeah. I have I so a 80%, 80 percent. That's 80 a lot. Yeah. yeah. yeah that That's means... why they don't want to sell. The whole reason I'm not yeah. selling my house, I'm at 2.875. I don't yeah. need a five yeah. bedroom free bath house. Yeah. I am never leaving. <laughs> Ever. Plus, I'm with you. Plus <laughs> property tax. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. I've been in there for 20, 26 years. Yeah. No interest rate has been. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 I mean, it's 90%. Yeah, so all wow. mortgage homes have a mortgage under 6%. It's 80% under 5%. Wow. Yeah. And 65% under 4%. And 28% under 3%. I'm wow. 28 for sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so that's a big chunk of people. Never again. So Never again. Never again. But you don't know that. Under 20 20 20 20 20 20 percent. Uh, 28 percent have mortgages under 3 percent. Oh, 28 percent. So total 90 percent have under 6 percent. 90. 90 percent. So if you're targeting the 90 percent, you're wasting a lot of time and money. And but, money. but don't, don't just put that out of your mind because if someone still has a 3%, they can still rent that out and yeah. buy another property. That and yeah, that someone needs it. to sell. Yeah. <laughs> so, the ones that, so the ones that are, so don't get discouraged with the numbers, know the numbers, yeah. but but utilize your strategy a little differently. Don't spend all your money on all that grouping of people. Not to say no, don't farm them, but just don't get discouraged you know, farming that group. Still keep them, but know that you want to spend a little bit more money and time on the people that have a little bit more difficulty. Yeah, strategy. Yeah. Figure out which yeah. is the other tips yeah. to add to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, 2411. Okay. So once that property address comes up, I'm going to hit other reports. I'm going to hit lead sheet and then I'm going to generate. So now what it's doing is it's crunching all the numbers 2.5 miles away from the office that have a life event or a distressed event. So whether it be a lien, notice of default, um, More list data. pendants mm -hmm. of, uh, I don't know, uh, what else is there? Oh, so, bankruptcy, yeah. So for agents that call you for, for a farm, uh, this, this is exactly the same thing you're gonna It's the same right? thing, yeah. So, but this is, this is, yeah, this this at least saves in your own account mm -hmm. and you know it's yours. Okay, so now that it's done doing that, I'm gonna click on here. Whoa, wow. And now you have your entire list 2.5 miles away from this office. There's 218 households that have some sort of event going on. 101 of them have a lien, means they're having a hard time paying. So this is the opportunity to say, hey, maybe you can stay home or, or something, right? This is These are the group of people you want to talk to. Affidavit of deaths, notice of default, divorce. So there's 218 of them. So these are all the events um, the life events that 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 homeowner has. So these are the ones we're pulling. Mm -hmm. so, so I ran the last six months. Okay. Yeah. So it's these are all filed already six months ago. So you can change them around, but this is the easiest way to pull it because if not, you go through each tab and you play with it. That's nice. Yeah, it simplifies it for you so easily. So this is like I think of it as a treasure map. I'm giving you the treasure map. Go find the treasure. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> yeah. Does this have anything less than six months? Like, you can change it. So you can change it. But this is this is the easiest way to run it. I'll show you how to change it, and you can filter it by yourself. It's just a lot more work. So it's standard default is six. six. So let's just say I'm going to play with the affidavit of deaths. Okay. So I'm going to hit by now. <laughs> Okay, so I clicked on one of the categories of the life events. Yeah. So yeah, 164 of them now show up for 82 bucks. So if you wanted the phones and emails, Michelle was asking for phones and emails. We hit edit search. And now you go to the star. And you're going to see. Oh, there you go. Sorry, I pressed the wrong one. So you have, see, 75% accuracy rate for five cents for um, phone numbers, and then 35% for seven cents for email. Mm -hmm. So you can choose which one you like. If you want both, it's 12 cents. If you want one or the other, seven or five cents. Okay. So I'm just going to click both because most of the time everybody wants both. I'm going to hit get count. Every single time you you mess with the the details or the font or the, the drop downs and the filters, you always have to hit get count or it's not going to do anything. So now it's getting count. So now it's a hundred bucks. You're right. Hundred yeah. for one hundred and sixty four, you get a hundred for a hundred bucks. So now, if out of the hundred and sixty four, an email or a phone number cannot be found, it will credit back into your account. So you don't have to worry about paying for something that doesn't you you, you, can, you, that you can have. yeah you cannot have. So you're gonna have that option. So now Irma was asking, how do I run it for three months? So that was the 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 like the trick way, the the cheat sheet way. So you would go into farming. You can have these three searches, radius, boundary, or area search. I'm not going to show each one of them because we're kind of time crunch, crunch on time. So I'm just going to hit boundary search because I like this one better. Um, you zoom in. It has me in Anaheim, but it's okay. I'm going to say I want this. I just want this block. And the good thing with boundary search, you can make it, you know, very, yeah, very detailed to whatever you want. So now I'm going to hit get count. Now all the filters show up. So Irma, this is where it becomes a little fine tuning. Yeah, fine tuning. It's it's fun once you get the hang of it. So general tab, you know, I want owner occupied. Then you can go through each one and see what's you know what what filter you want to add on. I only want single family. You can you can pick you know duplex, triplex, etc. Um, let's see anything else I want to add. So that's all I want to add on this side, but. 
custom filters is where you're going to find the 30 plus. Remember the second category I told you guys? And the, these categories are free. So if I turn this one on, I'll get count just to show you. You got 22 properties in that little two block radius that I did. So now you're really, really precise in the area that you're looking at. Now let's just say, and let me turn that back off. And let's go to Premier Data, which is where you'll find the life events. You will go to leads, and then you would hit you would hit a drop down. Oops, what's happening here? So let's say we wanted notice the default, and then uh, the last you said three months. So three months. Uh, get count. There might not be any. Oh, you got one. So, so it's very, you know, it's it's in the last three months, there's only one filing. In the last six months, there was a lot more. Um, but that's where you would you would play with it. And then, of course, if you wanted to, phones and emails, you just add it in, and then you could just get count. And then for, you know, 12 cents, 17 okay. cents. Right yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so that's how you would do it. But you just play with all the different tabs. So that's how you would do the farming. And if you want us to do another farming class, we can come back and do another farming class. But I wanted to show you how easy it is just to pull those two categories. And those are the two categories that are being listed most frequently on the MRMLS. If you're not capturing this group of people, you're missing out because you're spinning your wheels a lot more than, than you need to. I mean, keep the same farm that you're doing. Don't get discouraged with the 90%, but this is, this is your 10%. Any questions for me? Thank you. You're welcome. If you don't have, uh, this is Ignite, right? Yeah. If you don't have Ignite, you need to email Angie and she'll get you. Uh, I'll get you all set up. Mm -hmm. All righty. Can you give labels? Huh? Can you give labels? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. I do labels all the time. <laughs> you just send me it, send me the list, and then we can get them. Oh, and then this is just some useful information for all the services in LA County. Buyers and sellers will need them to have to call and cancel or call and add. All right. Okay. Everyone? Okay. Fed, happy, <laughs> got all that information. So I suggest I actually did this for my grandparents personally um, to help get them their last deed, grant deed, or the last transfer deed. Um, super easy, but what it really takes is you going and playing with this data and information, which is how you learn it. So, um, real quick, uh, I was going to talk about two new things. You probably heard about it, but I was going to talk to you about kind of where our company is coming from and kind of like what Angie said. So when it comes to NHDs and the information that you're getting right, the most important thing when it comes to the information that you're getting is that it's accurate. And so um, there, we are an unregulated industry. And so there are a lot of options when it comes to NHDs, but how we differentiate ourselves and what our NHD information is where we're getting it from. So First American invests I'm pretty sure hundreds of millions a year on data. And that's something that everybody knows data is the new gold because data is how you find who is you know, selling their home or how do you find somebody who's most likely to sell. That's all data, right? That's all information that's giving you better um, opportunities so that you can sell a home. And that's all based on what that information is telling you, right? And so when it comes to the NHD and how the NHD can help you, when you get that um, that NHD report right, that's going to help you to determine: Do you have to do the FHDS inspection, right? If it's in a fire zone, or it will also tell you if that new fortress fire report is something that you should be ordering for your client. That's a tool for buyers because at the end of the day, the seller it doesn't matter if they're getting insurance or not, right? So if you're representing buyers, that's where that fortress tool can be helpful. But this is something I tell every agent. You have to have a relationship with your insurance brokers because I can order you that fortress report all day, but it may still not insure the property. Mm -hmm. And so spending $140 on top of the $100 or $75 that you're spending on the NHD and you don't have to is something for you that's going to make you look better with your client. I'm not just ordering these things for you. I'm doing it based on need and based on if it's important. And the other thing that we're finding is that that Forster's report, a lot of the RPAs, they were automatically putting that report in there and it was on condos, right? And a condo, you can't even do anything to the trees. It's all walls in. 
And so you're spending $140 on your client when you don't need to, right? And so that's something to be aware of. And then when you get the listing, this is something that you should counter out because it's not required if it doesn't make sense or you're asking the buyer, you can buy it, you can spend $140 and that'll help you to potentially get insurance. But you could also educate the buyer or the buyer's agent and say, this is something that you may want to go to your, your insurance broker first, being that to be the first step. The first step is the NHC when you get the listing, right? To know if it's in that fire zone. And then once you know it's in the fire zone, then you would go to the insurance broker and say, what do we need to do to get insurance? Because it's looking like we're not going to get insurance before you get that fortress report, because you could order that report and the insurance company says, I don't care. We're going to do it based on what we say and based on our suggestions. Whatever this fortress report says, yeah, we know the Department of Insurance helped develop this, but we're insuring it. We're, you know, this is all based on our actuaries and based on what we're providing. And so this is something that I've been telling all my agents, make sure that before you order that it's necessary or make sure that you're not spending $140 when you don't need to. So the other thing too, I know that you've probably heard this, um, Assembly Bill 1280. And the biggest thing to this is that they made it, I guess, for the consumer, right, the buyer, to better understand what they're signing on the statutory NHD signature page. So this shows you, and I have a few of these, but really all it did was add three extra lines. And those three lines, the first one is a high fire severity zone in a state responsibility area, the very high in a local, and very high um, in the state. And so if a report or an NHD comes back and they're stating that it's a high fire severity in a local, that means they're over disclosing. And this is something that I found. Um, and this is something that First American, we try to make sure we do not do is I had a client that ordered a report with another company and it stated it was close to the San Onofre, um, the San Onofre uh, nuclear facility was 17 miles from there but it disclosed it and the buyer didn't want to buy it because that was disclosed. So it made no sense to disclose that 17 miles away, but the company just gives all the disclosures. And the problem with that is it could seem to deal for you because it's over disclosing information that's not pertinent to the information, right? And that's like the environmental. When we pull the environmental, we're doing it based on what is closest to that property. And so if it's a leaking underground storage tank or a gas station that's down the block, we'll tell you if it was cleaned, if there was an issue with it, all of that information is within the environmental. And that's where as the agent, you know, you may have questions or your client has questions. I don't expect you to know any of that, right? Call me if you have questions on that environmental or if your clients have questions. And then also with those fire zones, right? If the, it's in that high or very high severity zone, if you're on the seller side, if they're asking, the buyer is asking for you to do that inspection. In most cases, a lot of those homes were already inspected within the last six months. So all you have to do is request that. And then you'll get that, that form from Cal Fire or the city that says, we did an inspection four months ago. It was clear. You're good to go. And a lot of people don't realize that you may not even have to do the inspection. And they can just pull that data and the fire department for most of those homes on a yearly basis checks is the brush away from the house. And if it's in compliance, they tell you or they don't tell you, but they essentially it's compliance in the form that's checked off. But then if it's not in compliance, what they do is they hang a tag. They tell the homeowner, this is what you need to do. You need to clean the, the roof or, you know, trim the trees, do those things. And if any of you live in fire zones, you probably have this on your own home. Um, and this is, again, this is the city trying to better understand these fires um, and the zones are expanding. I don't know if you've seen that they have added um, what's called the zone zero, which is the ember zone and embers can fly up to a mile. So this is why these zones are expanding and embers are the reason why fires start. So when you're like, I'm not even close to the fire zone, this is the reasoning the fire department saying, we know you're not that close to the mountains but you're close enough that if embers and the wildfires are, are shooting embers off, your house could be potentially at risk. 
And so this again is the reasoning. Yep. So the, the notice is, is uh, notified from fire department. Yep. And they do that yearly. Is that like a, also the weed abatement um, notices? Is that part of this? Typically like the 9A report or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, like for fire, or the weed abatement yeah. notices and the clearing and all yep. that. Okay. That's exactly. So brush clearance. Yeah. That brush, department. Yeah. Who comes by that's what it's for yeah because i've yep. gotten that on vacant lots yep. okay right. yeah and this is the other thing on vacant lots yeah. and i all my escrow people tell me this it may not be in an 8038 zone so you may not know that it needs to be clear that's right but that 9a report it shows it and this is where you as the agent i know during covid a lot of people were um waving the 9a report but if you need to do this and if you need to clear this and you don't do it, the fire department could come by and yeah. they could charge you like twenty thousand dollars. Seriously, yeah. twenty grand your client because they didn't clear it and it was overgrown, and they will then go do it themselves and then charge you the most amount. Yeah. So these are all things that it may not show up on the NHD, right? But this is where, as okay. doing your due diligence as the agent, mm -hmm. you don't want any of these headaches to come up. And that's so. like for the link. Where did the, um, I can't remember because that happened to me on a lot that didn't require a 9A. Yep. And then I kept researching and researching and it was a 10 grand bill that the seller, mm -hmm. oh, he forgot and didn't tell the buyer. Yep. So I can't remember how I found that. How did I find it? Where would that notice have been? Do you know? I'm might, have been find in, that out. might have been in title. Okay. Um, because that was very serious. I'll yeah. think, I'll find out and then I'll. Or it's from the city. So oh, city. Yeah, it might have been the city. City. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And these are things that obviously don't typically happen on a transaction, so you may not be looking out for it. Yes. But you got to just be aware of it. That's why I'm telling you, be aware of these things because these are those things that'll really prevent you from closing, and that's what we don't want to happen. What what's the word? What's nine A again? So the 9A report is um, typically after right? Yeah. Um, or, or is it? For Los Angeles. Yeah. Right, for LA City. And it provides um, essentially information. So if the uh, sewer's not hooked up, that could be in the 9A. I heard of a client recently, cost $30,000 to hook the, the connection back up. Yeah. And it came up in the 9A. So these this type of stuff. So brush clearance, that type of thing, um, and any uh, plumbing or the sewers and anything like that. That's where that 9A comes in. Is it only pertaining to certain cities or, or, or I believe it's LA County. LA County. Yeah, I don't think San Bernardino does it. Or LA City. LA City, yeah, right. LA City. Because not LA you County. have to check at the city for yep. like a lot in Alhambra to make sure there's no weird notice on yep. abatement. Yep. Weed abatement. Yeah. So my, my question is let's say the fire, fire department of post a, a certain amount of a bill in city, would the, the title company uh, disclose it on the uh, preliminary title report? I believe so, right, Andy? They would disclose if there's- be able to locate that, the bill. Right, the bill for- 90? Yeah. Uh, I think okay. escrow orders the 9 -8. They order it, but yeah. does it come up as it anything on? Okay. Yeah, that's all you need yeah. to it pull it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Usually right. the 9 -8 has to be pulled from him. Right. Sometimes don't show the 9 -8. And then so. Well, not for me. So we don't even do 9 -8. Oh. Yeah. So, so as a consequence, <laughs> the buyer has to resume that the bill. If it, it doesn't show on the 9 -8 report, then the buyer, it becomes buyer's debt. Who is responsible yeah. you say, for? I believe. Well, is this the escrow or the buyer or the issuance? Well, it's yeah. technically the seller's yeah. responsibility to yeah. this. It's a disclosure to yes. the buyer. So that's why I was saying a lot of people are just waiving it. And even though you waived it, if this comes up, if you weren't, you didn't do your due diligence in disclosing that information. I'm pretty sure. So, so what are the cities to require an IA report except the city of Los Angeles? I don't believe every other one does that. Mm -hmm. Most of them don't. So yeah. Some cities do. Yeah, just some do. Check. You just got to check, right? More and more cities are requiring. Yeah. I think uh, Amani does. Yeah, I know that. Okay. 
As soon as a yes, I know for Zuko. Zuko's doing it. And it's like every city's different. That's why it's hard to kind of generalize. You just want more in revenue. Yeah. That's basically revenue it. sources, people. Yeah. Revenue sources. Yeah. Come on, you don't need like uh, permits for yeah. twenty yeah. years. You don't need it, but the thing that's smart. The escrow, you need to get that's the escrow. Yeah. So you need to yeah, escrow. Escrow would be the one to order the item. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. Escrow, your escrow people would be able to order. How about if the escrow missed that? If they, I'm. <laughs> that's, that's, my, right. Right. Well, that's not me. That's why I don't know. But that's why you exactly it may, if the you know, right? And that's if there's mistakes. Um, this is something that I, I sometimes talk about. E and O insurance at the end of the day, you've never had to use it. That's most important. That's the best. We've been in business. We're the oldest. So our JCP brand, I don't know if you guys know JCP LGS. This was the first disclosure, NHD disclosure company. So that's part of our company. We we have both brands. They're just more uh, popular in NorCal. But since the beginning, we've never used an email. We have over 30 million, which is three times the average of the industry. We've never used it. So anyone who talks about ENO insurance, at the end of the day, you just got to know our data is correct, and we've never used our ENO insurance because that protects you. And then the last thing I was going to show you when it comes to ordering this fortress report. So um, with this Fortress Fire Report, it's super easy on our website. Um, so if you can see right here, and I can log in real quick to show you um, how it works. And the Eagle ID that you use to log in with anything with Angie's system also works for our system. Oh, really? So it's, yeah. Same credential. Yeah. So that's as a company, we've tried to do that to make it as easy as possible. And that's why we do our, our thing together is because a lot of the things that we with title has crossover with our stuff. So Melarus taxes, pace liens, that's going to come up on the NHD. It can also come up on the preliminary title report. I've also found though, um, I've ordered things and um, another title company was on the same RPA. In, a Melarus came up on ours and it didn't come up on theirs. So that's again why it's very important to order the NHD when you order the prelim. And the reason being, you know, if a Melarus comes up and your client can't afford it, now you lost a deal because you didn't know that information. I, I heard that certain properties have two different Melrose. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that can happen. And Rosedale is one in Azusa that I know a lot of people um, that that's has a Melarus and that's a very popular area. That, that would be right up with the uh, property tax here. Yeah. <laughs> Can't remember my login. It's saved on my computer. I, I can't remember it. Okay, so um, what I was just gonna say. Oops. So what I was gonna say with the um, ordering of this wildfire report. So when you order it, it asks you two questions. The reason why we ask these questions and not every company that's selling this is asking these questions. We wanna make sure it's as accurate as possible. So the two questions we ask is what type of roofing material it has and what type of siding? Because every home in the risk score will change based on the siding type or the roofing. So if it's a single, a shingle shake roof, right? Those older homes, obviously that's a lot more fire um, prone than you do with a tile roof, right? Tile can be heated to very high temperatures. And also the siding. So if it's stucco versus brick versus any type of that type of siding. So if a company is not asking you those questions, um, I, I believe that Fortress asks, has those questions being asked because they want to make sure it's as accurate as possible. Because if they do get a risk score that's higher than the actual risk score, it's going to then suggest $20,000 worth of work versus maybe $500 or $800. And then you could have a situation where you're representing the seller, the buyer's agent requests this, they get that data, and that information is not accurate to what type of home it is. The buyer could come back and say, we see that they're suggesting $20,000 worth of work. 
we want you to take 20,000 off the asking price when it's not necessarily true. And so that's again, why we ask these questions. Um, and that's why I always you know, say why it matters to work with, um, with us versus anyone else. We look through all of these things and we see how is it practically used for you and how is it gonna cause issues for you? So if that's like this Fortress report, if it doesn't make sense, don't order. But it's going to give us that $140 report that you talked Correct. about earlier. Yep. And so we may or may not need to. Yeah. And I will never push this as a guarantee because it's not. And that's the thing is if anyone's saying it's guaranteeing you insurance, it's not. Because that's what this is supposed to do is to give insurance companies more information on um, potentially, um, you know, trimming trees, bushes to get in compliance. Mm -hmm. But like I said before, it doesn't, it all depends on the insurer. They determine it. So even if you order this, they still have to determine whether or not they're going to say, and Mark, um, I think it said on the Monday meeting, they, they do things differently and whatever their suggestions are, are really the most important because that's who's guaranteeing or telling you whether they're going to insure it. Yeah, so this is the last one before, you know, you have to talk first with the insurance before you order this one, because that doesn't make sense if the insurance says, hey, you don't need that. So you may have to counter this out. That's why I'm telling you this. You may have to counter this out on the RPA. If somebody's asking this, you may have to counter and say, well, this doesn't make sense. And if you question have questions about if it makes sense, call me. This is why I'm here, is if you don't understand or you don't know, don't try to guess, just call me because it's better that we know. I just sound really ignorant um, because I've never really had this report show up. Why would we want it? So the biggest thing with why you would want it yeah. is if you can't get insurance okay. and the insurance company is essentially saying, you know, okay, well, if you go. show us something that improves it, right? Okay, but so the they're problem. not all taking this in not every insurer will we'll take that down. If there really is a lot of insurers now, mostly California Fair Plan. Yeah. Okay. And, and this was developed by CAR and the Department of Insurance. Okay. What I think is going to happen is there may be a, an insurance offering through this company or through CAR or the DOI to try to um you know, insure people yes. who are not able to get insurance since State Farms left and all states left and all these companies have left, they may create essentially a public option other than the California Fair Plan okay. through this company. We don't know though. This is all speculation, but okay. what we understand is that this risk fire, uh, risk report and the wildfire um, protection that it's pretty much providing is that it's just giving you more data and information. So more to know, but this is really only if you're representing buyers, because as the seller, the seller doesn't want anything to cause an issue with the transaction, right? So if you are representing the seller and someone is asking for this, the buyer can pay for this on their own. They can use a credit card and literally go to our website and just order this to get that information. But the other thing that most people don't realize is if you order this and disclose it, and the buyer then falls out, your new buyer, you have to disclose this just like inspection. Once you get that information and it's in front of you, you can't say, I didn't see it, right? Because you didn't like what it said. And this is why as the agent, you gotta make sure you're doing your due diligence and make sure there's a reason. It's the Fortress Wildfire Report or Fortress Fire is the company. Fortress wildfire report. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, I learned something every day. Yeah. And this this was something that a lot of agents and TCs were telling me that when they were filling out their RPA, it was automatically propagating. And so if you've had this on, if you're representing um, either the seller or the buyer, you may have been, this may have been put in front of you. So make sure you read the RPA before you sign. You know it. what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yes. Because for the seller, you don't care if they get insurance, really, because you're just trying to help them sell the home. It's for the buyer. They need to get the insurance 
if it's in a high fire or very high severity zone. Yeah. yeah but but uh, but uh, I have to talk with the, with, the, with the buyer's insurance before we 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 oh, yeah, correct that makes sense. They say you don't need that. Yep. We guarantee you. Yep. We insure it. Yeah. Well, thank you. This is nice to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Why? I'd rather tell you. You know, it's like I. It's one hundred forty dollars. Like. I'm not making a ton of money, and why would I make your clients pay more money? Because yeah. you have to order the NHT yeah. already. <laughs> That's on top of. So instead of a hundred dollars for the report, it could cost you two hundred and forty, and there's no guarantee that that report is going to get you the insurance. And so again, this is yes. My question is: uh, mm -hmm. is that the, would that be safe to say? That West and Gilbert City and West and Gilbert Valley will probably don't need this this disclosure report. Depends. So certain most of these it wouldn't be in a high fire or very high severity zone, right? That's what you're saying. Right. But there's obviously some of these little cities where there yeah. is some little pockets of high fire. Properties yeah. that have yeah. rush from the high yep. end. Yep. So you're saying only uh, the property located at the high fire then we need to do extra. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to. It's not required. Yeah. Can you say it again? The high fire before the So high or very high severity fire zones. That's when. Yeah. So high or very high. Yeah. <laughs> And we put it on the first page yeah. to make sure. So the three things that we put on the first page, is it in a high or very high severity zone, where you go and who's responsible for that inspection? Because every city is different. The jurisdictions change. So LA city may have a cost of the inspection. Another one may not have a cost and it may be done through Cal fire, or it may be done through like the city of Alhambra. Every city is different. So that's why it's important. Order the NHD early. If it doesn't close again, you don't pay, but if you're getting this on the front end, it's going to help you. I hope it closes. I hope that we get paid, right? We all hope this happens and we're going to work through it. But if you get the prelim and the NHD early, you'll get through most of these things. Instead of paying $140 for the report, if the buyer goes to city, would city provide the, the information? Not the same because this is a totally separate company. The information you would be getting would be in the NHD. So high or very severity zones and what you need to do, AB 38 compliance, all of that is in the NHD. Yeah, my pleasure. And then the tax estimator, this again, um, when it comes to tax information, not all tax information is the same like I talked about. We get um, we have a special relationship with these cities that we're getting that tax information as early as possible, because as you know, that cycle Sometimes it could be 14 months or could be a, a six month period where there's a delay in the data. We're getting that as early as possible. So what we found is there's sometimes discrepancies in different NHD companies because of where they're getting it from. So it may not be as accurate. And this tax estimator, the supplemental taxes, and I actually went to a house on Caravan today. The last time the house was sold was 70 years ago. Oh, 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 so yeah. I sold a house like that. So the supplemental taxes for the new buyer, and again, this is representing the buyer or seller. If you represent the seller, it doesn't matter. But the buyer, they will have a high supplemental bill because that difference in time of those taxes, they, the, the state of California wants their taxes. <laughs> they want their money. My daughter paid less than 10000 Care about the property. Mm -hmm. That this is good. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, you, if you don't remember anything, my number, call me, email. I have my card. I have my card. Okay, this is supposed to actually end at two. Um, and I didn't get a chance to say anything. So I'm heartbroken. Yes, I have. I'm heartbroken. Okay, okay. 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 so. I will. Hi, everyone. She has this person there. So, all the information that she gave you, I know, is just overwhelming. Yes. I'm going to, uh, uh, my head is spinning. Every time Brandon says portrait, I just go, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, 
after you get your farm from Angie, right? <laughs> and you figure out what you're doing and who you're targeting. Mm -hmm. I have the stuff you can take out in your farm, right? That this is how we put this all together, right? I have door hangers, three different types of door hangers, okay? Um, nice job. I have really cute um, clear plastic bags, right? I have where the heck is it? Yeah, it's all here somewhere, people. This goes in the plastic bag. It tells the people how to get their house ready to sell. Now they don't come put together like this. That's why you had children? I did too. My kids don't live at home anymore. You're on your own. Okay. You do this. Put your business card in there. Put a piece of hard candy. Hard candy is the key. Don't put chocolate. Chocolate melts. People crazy. Um, hard candy, your business card. You. Hang them on the door. These are all free. They come in groups of 250. Okay. All okay. you do is call, text, or email me. I have hundreds of these in my door. You can go to Target too and buy those little hearts. Yeah, absolutely. Candy hearts. Now the time to do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then when you hang it, you know, hang it this way. You don't, I don't care. You can marketing me. This is for you. Right. So you have these. We have the three. These are. For mass farming, right? This is for blanketing your farm. Door hangers are for blanketing your farm, right? This is, those are some boxes that you could also put your business card in for a month. Mix it up in your farm. Do this one time, do business door hangers the next time. And then when you get your open house or you're sitting in an open house, then you use the open house door hangers. And unless you have the most perfect penmanship on the planet, get a free label and print the info for the open house. Pop it on there, put your business card. You do about 25, 30, 40 of these, invite the neighbors. And we can print the labels for you. And, and, and you'll even print your labels for God's sake. Yeah. So um, you're at zero dollars right now. Right now? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to deliver this to you here. So, you know, no gas. Um, invite the neighbors. Your next listing is coming from your current open house. And they have a The neighbors board. want to know what you're doing. Okay. So they're going to come anyway. Invite them, right? Mm -hmm. Invite the neighbors. That's they also have a slot, right? Yep. Yeah. Business card slot? Business card slot? Okay. And you can all, all use do. all three an IRA so, to find out who their name is if right. they don't tell so you. So you have you have the, all the options for the free name. stuff, right? So you start doing all that, you're getting all your warm leads. This is for cold calling, right? When you get your warm leads, you all should have an online account at fahw.com. If you do, and when you log in, you will see my face. That's how you know you've done it correctly. If you have not done it correctly, you will not see my face. But from there, we have a marketing portal. Well, we will do flyers for you with your picture, your logo for free. Now, the catch is there are flyers. You don't get to change the words or the layout. You get to add your picture, your logo, right, and your name to our flyers. But some of them are actually kind of pretty cool. We have um, a moving checklist. Put your name, all your nonsense down here at the bottom. Quality paper, this is what they invent. It's not, it's, you know, 30 pound gloss. Good stuff. There are probably, I want to say, 12 or 14 flyers on there that you can personalize with your picture, your logo, your name. The, here's the catch. Because they're free, we're only going to give you 25 of each one. So you're not going to get 300 flyers. But these are not for, this is not for mass farming. This is for warm leads. This is someone who's already responded to our cold calling, right? And we're going to hit them up with this. Yes. 25 a month. Yes. So every single month on the first of every month or the twelfth of every month, you log in and you order everything all over again. So that you have everything. And they ship them out. And we'll ship them to you for free. To your house or to the office. We don't care. And you get this three and a half weeks and it works again. This is um on our marketing portal. When you I'll send Ruben the instructions on how to set up an online account specific to this office. When you do that, when you log in after you set up your account, when you log in, you will see my face. My purple little shirt. Supplies. So this is this is just um, a moving checklist. We have a maintenance checklist. So some things can be personalized and some things can't. Um, but you can make 25 of these also. Okay, here's my suggestion on this. You know those clear plastic acrylic stands you see at Michael's? Yeah. Okay. Put pictures in, go buy like five of them. Go to the Jiffy Loops and the dry cleaners in your farm. Ask them, just don't put your stuff up because that's rude. Ask them, because people stand there all day long waiting for their stuff. Put your face there because we also have seasonal newsletters spring, winter, summer, and fall. Those be formatted for Um, 
the home care buzz, if you are one of my agents, you should get an email every month from me that has a monthly newsletter and it's, it's home care buzz, which is shareable on social media. And it takes me out of it. It just is home care buzz. Really? Yeah, it takes okay. me out of it. Um, the only part that we want to be part of this on the printed version, in the very back, it just has a little blurb about home yeah. warranty. The rest is all home care stuff. You gotta add me to that. Right? Oh well. Um, on social media. Yes, <laughs> home care buzz, the newsletter that you get emailed every month. Says. So you do this, right? And put them in the, in the around your around your primary, dry cleaners, chicken loops, whatever it is. Those mom and pops that everybody goes to. Yeah, they've always got the little boards up there with the card. Put this up and stuff. So the other, and this is really cool. So after you do your farm, and you get your open house, and you get your listing, and you sell it, right? Well, this is for the buyer, but follow me on this path. This is a home maintenance guy. Do 25 of these. If you have to do 25 a month, I want to be your home warranty rep. Okay. Because if you do 25 a year, I still want to be your home warranty rep. Give this to every buyer you have. Um, because no one has been taught anything about how to take care of their house ever. Who, who raise your hand if you knew you're supposed to empty your water heater every year? Thank you. I learned it like three years ago. Who's ever done it? And you won't no, oh, them. show off. Mm -hmm. um, and once it starts knocking, it's too late to empty the whole thing anyway. So there's a lot of stuff in here to help you home. If you're doing, if you're a buyer's agent, you have a little packet you give your buyers at the end. Make sure this is part of it. And can you customize it with your name? Or you on the front. 25 on the front, your logo. So after you set up your online account, I'm going to send everybody instructions on how to do it. When you set up your online account from your PC, not your iPad, not your phone, from the computer. You need to know where your headshot is, where your logo is, because you're gonna, that's what you're going to have to do to personalize these things. You don't want to be scrambling around, right? Because once you log in and you see my face, it said orders, marketing materials. Mm -hmm. Click on marketing materials and you're off to the races. Mm -hmm. Every single flyer is exactly the same. You have to type in your name, your license number, and the pertinent information, whatever phone number or email address you want. We are not going to proofread this for you. Don't get it wrong. It's your information. <laughs> Can't tell you how many times an agent called me. Oh my God, they didn't spell my name wrong. Excellent. You're getting those, and you can. I don't want to reorder them, obviously. We won't hold that against you. Mm -hmm. They ship in about two days. You order it on Monday, you probably have it on Friday. So they come from uh, Central California. Mm -hmm. That's where I went. See to. those door hangers? Does it say that we'll, like, if they list with us, we'll provide them the home warranty, right? No, don't, the door hangers don't say that. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, they used to. Yeah. The day they don't need a generic message. Okay. You know, um, because we don't want to, that's like a quid pro quo thing. We don't want to, that's a RESPA. Oh, a RESPA, because I remember. Yeah, that we threw it on there. Oh, okay. Everyone went crazy. So, okay. We backed off on that. Okay. Right. Um, this is key though. There's also a certificate on the site and the buyer's agent gives them this and then a certificate saying you have a home warranty. You can also print those up. You just completely print in their contract number and put that in the same folder so they know. There's little things you can do. But so the only downside is it does come stapled, it's not bound, but it's still quality paper. And it's still, you know, the information is actually useful. You know, when my kid bought his condo, I just said, here, read. Right, do something. So that's it now. And when you place orders with me, I put you all in our Keep in Touch program. Mm -hmm. So every time you place an order, your buyer gets four postcards from First American. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on the purchase of your new home. And then about 45 days later, hope you're settling into your new home. And then six months we do it. And at about nine months we do it. Happy anniversary on your field coming up on, on one year. Mm -hmm. Every postcard we send out, also said, and we were so excited to work with your agent and stuff, right? So mm -hmm. that's what we do. Your name is on all of us. Obviously, for us, it's, it's a drip. It's a drip campaign you don't pay for. Mm -hmm. I put everybody in it when I place the orders. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice way for you to just have one extra touch to your clients. You don't have to worry about it. We've got that for you. Because, mm -hmm. of course, we want them to review them more. Mm -hmm. That's our goal, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the back message there, right? If you're happy with your agent and you loved your home warranty, please bring them here. Mm -hmm. So we do that for you as well. Okay, so that's all the things we can do. But now is the time to really sit down with Angie if you haven't, figure out your farm, mm -hmm. right? Dial it down, do whatever you have to do. And once you do that, I will I'll back my Equinox up here. I'll throw the we will have a field day in the parking lot. I will unload all of these boxes. My husband will be so happy to get his garage back. Mm -hmm. But the clear bags, the door hangers, all of this stuff is free. 
but it's only as good, only good to use it. And I will tell you when you're doing your farm for the energy, do not overwhelm yourself. Mm -hmm. If you make it unattainable, you will not do it. That's right. Okay. Do not say, oh, you know, I'm going to do 5,000 houses in my farm. No, you are not. You are not. But don't do it to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you make it unreachable, it's, it is exactly that. Yeah. It's unreachable, right? Mm -hmm. Push yourself, absolutely. But you know you better than anyone else, right? If 100 is a good number, then 100 is a good number, right? But make sure you get the good 100, mm -hmm. not the fluff, you know, the yeah. nonsense game you supposed to Get rid of the nonsense and make sure you've got good leads that you're working after and then use everything we've got for you because it's free. You know, the statistics that Angie threw out earlier about the 90% mm -hmm. of our homeowners have a yep, under, under 6%. Whatever, um, is that 90% of uh, LA or LA County, California, the US? That's nationally. 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 So, That's and I will tell you, if we're going to throw around, throw around numbers, 53% oh. of all new homeowners will have a major system or appliance fail in their first year. Whether or not they have a home warranty. <laughs> so if they have a home warranty, we'll help pay for that. And if they don't, that's on them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, just a couple things because it is two o'clock. <laughs> um, when you're thinking about coverage for home warranty, I've said it for 10 years, I'm not a fan of roof coverage. I'm not. I don't think it's okay. what? roof, the roof leak okay. coverage. I'm not a fan. Um, and there's a very simple reason. If you have refrigerator coverage, if we can't fix it, we'll give you a new refrigerator. If you have a dishwasher, if we can't fix it, we're going to dishwasher. Absolutely. If your roof is leaking, you are not getting a new roof. Yeah. Period. You just not. You're getting a thousand dollar check. Yeah. That's a blue tarp, some high downs, and a dinner in Las Vegas. That is not a new roof, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it is not a good return on your investment mm -hmm. or for your clients. And I, in in my opinion, it sets it up for a bad experience. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're not saying it's not worth it. Take care of everything except for your roof. Mm -hmm. Because you know when you get your roof and it starts leaking, you're not getting anything. Mm -hmm. or you're going to get insulted with a one tenth of what your roof is going to cost. Not even that. One twentieth of what your roof is right. going to cost you. Don't do it. There are better ways to spend the money on a home warranty, mm -hmm. right? If you're looking at high end homes, double the appliance covers to ten thousand. Your standard home warranties have five thousand dollars for every single appliance mm -hmm. on its own. You got a Wedgwood, you got a Viking, you got a Sub Zero. That's more than five thousand. <laughs> appliance Plus costs the same as roof coverage, but if you get Appliance Plus and that Viking still needs to be replaced, guess what? Now, if it's under ten thousand dollars, and at our price it is, it's covered, right? Keep those things in mind. High end homes, you need to do that. Regular stuff like the rest of the, the all of us in the GE world, just buy five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about us; we'll be yeah. okay. Yeah. But if you have the high end homes, and some of them do, those built in refrigerators are costly. Yeah. Even if they're not sub zero, they're ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. That alone is worth it. The goodwill for your for your clients on that alone. That's okay. Right. Additional. Additional. Mm -hmm. um, value and eagle and max of the three plans. Mm -hmm. I don't sell basics. I don't. I don't like basics. Mm -hmm. So value eagle max. And if somebody like let's say I I mean I know we're not going to push this but I'm just asking you is there a discount if somebody buys two years up front Yeah so it's a um it's a funky discount we say it's twenty five percent off but it's not twenty five percent off the total it's twenty five percent off the base price Okay for the second year so the but the options are still the full price Okay so it's less than double if it's if it's had less than double right you save about I don't know ten percent off the total. But they say it's twenty percent. There's a discount. Yeah. yeah. The, the longest you can do is two years. It's okay. Um, if it's new construction, we do four years. Okay. But if it's not new construction, two years is the best you can do. Because that could be a closing gift from an agent Absolutely to get yes. their second year. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking about what I was And if your clients don't have a warranty in their transaction, they can still buy one within 60 days at the same price. Mm -hmm. And we have monthly payments. Okay. Within 60 days of that's for closing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and after that, they can still get a home warranty just a little more stuff. Yes. Sandy, how are your rates after the tax? So we are like other insurance companies. So you have car insurance, homeowners insurance, they use it, your prices go up the next year. Yeah. Home warranty doesn't work like that. So I'm going to use uh, not real numbers. First year is $500, right? Yeah. Roughly. When you renew, it's going to go up. Let's call it $600. Every single person who has the same coverage at $500 when they renew, every single person pays the same. It's not based on use. Right. So everyone pays six hundred. But I mean, after the fact, like if they don't purchase that time. Or... Oh, oh, um, it, it's up like forty bucks a month, fifty bucks a month. It's not mm -hmm. a lot. Because so I have a friend and family that I've never been in. You just called my company. It's like two hundred dollars. You call me. 
Yeah. Once the process, they just come check out your house. Yep, yeah, we don't even do that. Okay. We have one question. Is everything in good safe working order? <laughs> yeah, yes. the answer is yes. Oh, the answer is yes. always yes. yes. <laughs> okay, Lord, yes, it's always yes. Okay, yeah, I think yeah. 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 to the best of my knowledge, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? That's all you got to say. People start going down rabbit holes. Don't talk too much. Yeah. Nope, not about that stuff, yeah. but always doable. Okay, I've been doing this. This is my 20th year. Mm -hmm. It will be 20 years in August. Um, First American Home Warranty is having its 40th anniversary in April. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing home warranties in California. It's where the industry started in California about 50 years ago. So we're for 40 years this year. So, and we've been with Cold Maker George since the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For 40 years. We've been with this all. Um, so I'm here for you. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Andy. And I really do. I'm going to send you the info on how to set up an account. It'll be personalized. All you do is blast it out. For Thank you. Put everything in you guys need to know. Um, set up your account. Mm -hmm. when you log in. So I'll make it right because you'll see me. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you know, you'd think I would. <laughs> uh, you know what? When she, if he emails me, you know, have her digital instrument. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I get so like that. You don't me see anymore, and I wander around a business card. Let me see if anybody online has any questions. Any questions online? Oh, hi, online. <laughs> There's Sandy. Woohoo! But you guys, this is the key. If you want this stuff, I have these back. All right. Cards. Well, then this concludes this meeting. Yep, I don't have the insert, but I have the back. Oh. Can we come back with the inserts also? Yeah. No, no rush.